Well, hello, everybody. That is our official word. We're being recorded, which means we have information worth sharing. It is time for another TechWise TV workshop. My name is Rob Boyd. Uh, hopefully, you're very familiar with these things and you've come back to join us. Uh, we're talking HyperFlex today. Uh, we've talked HyperFlex a lot on TechWise TV, but on the workshops, uh, we do things a little bit differently, of course. And uh, this time, I thought we'd take it even in a little bit more different direction because we had the ability to share information that I think is really worth sharing. And this is understanding um, a little bit more on the business side of how much value from uh, reports from actual customers, um, as well as a, a look into the methodology behind how we kind of do that type of thing. And so we're going to hear from uh, Matt Martin from uh, IDC here in just a moment. And so stick around for that. A couple of quick housekeeping notes, just three things that we always need to cover here at the top. Don't forget, this is a live stream audio broadcast. There is no video to be watching, but certainly the audio is important. Um, and, of course, seeing uh, kind of the visual notes from the PowerPoint and such like this. So please leave the WebEx media player running on your computer for the entire time. Uh, these workshops are also about questions. It is a chance for us to get a bit interactive as necessary, so don't hesitate to, um, uh, to, to put questions into the question box there on your screen. Uh, as they come up, just let us know, and we'll either address them right away or we will save some for the end uh, and keep it conversational in that respect. Uh, so please do that. If you're having any issues at all with uh, with WebEx, uh, we have the incredible Kelly Uselman, who is our WebEx producer. She's behind the scenes. We don't get to hear from her, uh, although you don't get to hear from her. We did. But um, she's she's going to jump on and answer any kind of questions you have. If you're not hearing our voices uh, right or something doesn't look right, just don't hesitate to bring that up either. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, we always do surveys, and this is a key point of feedback uh, all across Cisco, as you're probably more aware. Uh, and as we've kind of learned here recently, as WebEx continues to improve and focus on security. We now hear the lady telling us about our recording and making sure everybody knows that. Uh, but also, when when the survey pushed put it to go to the survey, you're going to get a warning about leaving WebEx. Please understand, this is okay. This is uh, this is normal. It's just a uh, uh, you're you're leaving WebEx from the formal presentation part, but you're going to another site that we've got complete control over uh, to gather the survey information. So hopefully that won't hold you back from uh, giving us your feedback, typing in your comments or ideas, because we really do look at that. Stuff. Stuff closely. So, uh, our topic officially is improving performance and agility with Cisco HyperFlex. Uh, I promise you're going to get a lot of good ideas out of this one uh, from the many, many examples that we get a chance to share today. Um, and uh, to get moving on that, I want to first, though, talk in a little bit more detail, kind of set the stage, if you will, uh, with a gentleman I've had the pleasure of working with um, on the last. I don't know, several number of events. Kale Hiltz is a product manager, uh, not product manager, product marketing manager with the, um, uh, with the team, and he's been a key conduit for the information that, um, that I'm always looking for. And so, Kale, I thought we might start off, before we bring Matthew on, just to kind of level set, talk a little bit about, um, wow, because HyperFlex has come a long way uh, in terms of um, uh, what, what we've been able to do for the hyperconvergence market within Cisco, but I thought we might start a little bit just kind of understanding, well, w what is the current environment? How would you describe it from your perch, if you will, or from your angle uh, with what you're responsible for? And, and welcome, by the way, to TechWise. Thank you, Rob, and hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, yeah, so my name is Kale Hills. I'm Product Marketing Manager uh, dedicated to our HyperFlex platform. Um, so as we look across the, the landscape, you know, it's, it's a really dynamic environment right now for a lot of our customers where you're seeing a really growing um, public cloud utilization. Uh, the edge is a big talking point with everyone uh, trying to figure out what they're going to do as their next uh, edge computing platform as they try to adopt IoT initiatives uh, and even modernize uh, branch office locations into uh, in a, a, a infrastructure that's going to be more seamless to the to the core data center, uh, and so when we look at HyperFlex, the way we you know are positioning it now within the market is that it really is that uh, that first step that uh, a lot of our customers are taking to to springboard them into a modern infrastructure across the board. You know, when I say that, you know, I mean core, cloud, and edge uh, as a seamless infrastructure. And, and really, you know, when we talk about HyperFlex, it's it's that first step to modernizing the core data center is really what we're going to be talking about here. It's that uh, taking that first step from 
uh, legacy infrastructure, three tier, or even some uh, some aging converged infrastructure, uh, and and really getting those workloads, getting your data uh, out of those silos, and really bringing them into a consolidated virtualized pool where it's easier to manage uh, both uh, from a personnel standpoint as well as even uh, faster to spin up uh, new workloads, provision new workloads uh, for for new you know, projects. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on here from a Hyperflex standpoint. Um, you know, Matt will go through the data points that we've collected working with IDC on uh, on this paper where we've had a lot of really good feedback from our customers and we just wanted to consolidate that into a paper with IDC that uh, that really shows everything in there. Yeah, you know, so one of the things is 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 part of the well, this happened actually well before the prep. Um I was reading the paper, and we encourage everyone to get the paper that Matthew uh, co-authored uh, on this and was leading the research with, because there is a lot of good information, and we're certainly going to cover cover it in a verbal from a verbal standpoint. But the paper has a lot of value, and as I look at that, I'm just kind of curious, Kale, from your perspective, maybe just or Cisco's perspective. Um, what kind of benefit do we get? We work with IDC to get a different viewpoint. Uh, is it is it about third party? Um, Outlook to, to kind of recheck our, our assumptions and, and where we're going with things and kind of see what customers are saying when they don't speak directly to us, they speak to IDC. Is that along the lines? How would you position it? Yeah, so we do a lot of work with our customers. Uh, we've got a lot of good customer reference stories out there uh, highlighting the success they've had with Hyperflex. Uh, the goal with working with IDC is to really take their uh, position in, in the industry as a uh, trusted advisor. And, and leverage that into a third party uh, neutral paper that focuses on the data. We really wanted to take the data that we've seen from customer stories, customer feedback, uh, and put that through um, the IDC process to really pull all the benefits together and quantify them into a single paper where we can roll up uh, overall um, benefits uh, in mm -hmm. numbers to to really demonstrate the, the value of Hyperflex. You know what, and that's a really good point, Kale. I'm going to transition over to Matthew here, but I like what – I that was one thing that, that, I, that I got out of the report immediately was we do hear a lot of stories about what customers are doing. Um, and in fact, I remember from the very beginning, uh, un I don't want to say uncharacteristically, but Cisco, you know, we were promising, you know, years ago when we first rolled out Hyperflex, we were actually kind of uh, reticent about telling people, hey, these are the applications you should be running. These are the type of things you should be focused on. Uh, and then it was really feedback through customers that were saying, well, you know, we've been testing running some more advanced stuff or more business critical, mission critical type stuff. And we've been pleased, you know, and so, but you know, we go back, we do our research and, and kind of figure out. And, and now we're seeing, uh, we're, we're not seeing uh, people ho having to hold back, and they're saying, wow, this combination, what Cisco brings with regards to a hardware-software combination to address this and bring simplicity to this market has been really beneficial. But I think what's always hard to do is you hear these stories, and then you, how do you quantify them, and how do you begin looking for the patterns? I wouldn't even begin to know how to do it, but I, I feel smarter having read your paper, Matthew, <laughs> um, and you and your team put together. And so it's a pleasure to have you on here, and it's it's uh, uh, and it's quite nice for anybody who hadn't read it. This is a way to, to well, don't worry about reading it right now because for the next you know thirty minutes here, Matthew's going to explain things to us, which is uh, sometimes a better way to learn. I think let's just get it straight from the source, and then use the paper to follow up and dig into other details that may not make sense, but. But Matthew, do you mind uh, start to take us through kind of uh, what you guys have done, how you did it, and uh, maybe shed a little light on some of these surprising areas where customers are telling us stuff or, or finding value in places that uh, maybe we'd not had had not first considered. Yeah, absolutely, Rob, and um, thank you both Kale and Rob for that really informative introduction. Um, again, I'm Matt Martin, Research Director with the IDC Business Value Strategy Team. And I'm really happy to be here today to talk about the study that we at IDC have carried out for Cisco. Um, you just heard some interesting background, both about the hyper-converged infrastructure market, as well as Cisco Hyperflex more specifically. And I'm going to build on what Rob and Kale just discussed and tell you about our research that is based on speaking with organizations that are using 
Hyperflex to run and support their business operations. And I think you'll see that many of the areas of impact and types of benefits that Cisco customers reported to us when we did these interviews track to what Kale and Rob discussed. Before talking about our research though, meaning our research with the Cisco customers that goes to the specific value of Hyperflex, I'm going to take a brief step back and speak for just a little bit about IDC's perspective on the broader hyper-converged infrastructure market. This background really provides the foundation for what we'll hear from Cisco customers about their use of Hyperflex. IDC has found that organizations around the world are digitally transforming their businesses to create new value and competitive, competitive advantages through new offerings, new business models, and new customer relationships. We found this to be true globally, no matter the company size nor the vertical industry. In fact, we believe that no industries have escaped the need to digitally transform. On this slide, you can see results from two ID surveys that show us how these trends are impacting infrastructure investments. On the left-hand side of the slide, you can see that infrastructure investments are increasingly strategic in nature and decisions are being made with an eye towards supporting broader business transfer transformation efforts. In fact, 72% of the 1,000 companies we surveyed told us that their IT infrastructure investments are going to support digital transformation and business growth. On the right-hand side of this slide, labeled number two, you can see results from another IDC survey we've done exploring the top business priorities of 1,300, more than 1,300 companies. Here you can see that increasing productivity, improved operational efficiency, and increased agility are among the top business priorities these organizations reported. And this is not just related to IT, of course. So what does this mean for IT organizations, including their investment in IT infrastructure solutions? We think, and we've concluded, that it means that IT needs to change in a way that ensures they're able to provide the best platform and services for their changing business. As a technology, hyperconverged solutions are designed in a way that enables organizations to often achieve cost-effective, efficient, and robust infrastructures for their core business operations. This slide presents three types of benefits that we here at IDC more broadly associate with hyperconverged solutions. And you'll be hearing about all three of these areas as they specifically re relate to Cisco Hyperflex as well. First, hyperconverged hyper solutions help reduce over-provisioning and help organizations eliminate silos and thereby have positive impacts beyond capital expenditures. In fact, these can directly lead to lower costs in areas like power, cooling, and floor space for organizations within their data centers. Second, with hyperconverged solutions, organizations can start small and scale out, the result of which is improved IT staff productivity and increased agility within their data centers. These same solutions also help IT departments leverage IT generalists for lower value tasks, thus freeing up time for infrastructure specialists to work on more innovative and business critical projects. And the third point you can see here is that the software and automation-driven nature of hyperconverged solutions helps organizations reduce operational risk. Manual tasks related to hardware lifecycle are minimized, which lowers the likelihood of human error and provides flexibility that these organizations need to ensure the availability and performance of important business applications. As mentioned, the main reason I'm here today, though, is to tell you about the IDC business value study that we carried out for Cisco regarding the value that their customers are achieving with Hyperflex. I'll describe both the methodology behind our research as well as the most important findings from our research. What we on the IDC business value team do is research focused on quantifying the value of technology and technological solutions, which is the nature of the project that we've done for Cisco and what I'll be speaking with you about today. In short, this IDC business value white paper that we've done for Cisco on Hyperflex quantified the value of using Hyperflex for organizations that have deployed it as a platform to run a variety of enterprise level workloads and business applications. 
The foundation for the study and our findings more generally is speaking with individuals at organizations that are using Hyperflex and who are highly knowledgeable about the impact of its use on key areas such as IT costs, IT staffing requirements, IT agility, application availability, and business results. We conducted these interviews, which were in-depth in nature and covered a variety of qualitative and quantitative topics related to the impact of Hyperflex independently and use the information and data gathered in these interviews to create a model that shows the aggregated average experience for Cisco customers we interviewed in a variety of areas. For the study, IDC spoke with organizations that have deployed Hyperflex that were based in the United States, Europe, and Asia Pacific, and covered a diverse group of industries, including, as you can see on this slide, animal, animal medicine, energy, healthcare, logistics, rural resources, and retail. The focus of this study was on understanding the impact, both operationally and financially, of these organizations' use of Hyperflex. As you'll see in the coming slides, Findings include, include both financial results in terms of benefits achieved and investment costs incurred, as well as key performance indicator results in various IT and business areas. This next slide provides some additional details about our business value methodology as applied for this study. As I mentioned, the findings of this study are based on one-on-one -on -one interviews with individuals at organizations using Hyperflex. Interviews are confidential in nature and focused on Hyperflex's impact on their operations from a before and after perspective. In other words, what we did through use of these interviews is we assessed what the impact of Hyperflex has been on these organizations in areas that I mentioned before, IT costs, staffing requirements, IT agility, and performance, and then we tied those factors back to these organizations' IT and business operations. The results of our research provide the basis for the analysis included in the Business Value White Paper we published in March, entitled The Business Value of Improved Performance and Agility with Cisco Hyperflex. In addition to the White Paper, we also published a one-page summary of key quantitative findings with the IDC Business Value Snapshot. This next slide provides some additional details about the Cisco customers we interviewed for this study. As you can see, these were large organizations on average with substantial business operations, almost 13,000 employees on average, and over $20 billion per year in revenue with significant IT operations to support this level of business activity. These organizations have deployed Hyperflex to support significant workloads in their data center and branch office environments. You can see 13 Hyperflex clusters on average and 172 terabytes of data on average in these environments. With this level of business activity comes the need for these organizations to deliver the highest possible levels of IT performance and scalability to help them ensure that their IT operations can meet business demand across often distributed business operations, but while doing so as cost effectively and efficiently as possible. This is really the perspective from which we'll be looking at the value that this group of Cisco customers is achieving with Hyperflex. Finally, as you can see on these slides, these organizations are running a variety of business applications and workloads on their Hyperflex platforms. You can see the examples here, which included database, video and telephony, analytics, VDI, data warehousing, and one organization running a customer-facing e-commerce website on its Hyperflex environment. As I mentioned a couple of slides ago, one of the assets we published with this study was an IDC business value snapshot, which provides an overview of some of the most significant findings from our study. This slide shows this business value snapshot with a number of the key results that I'll be taking you through today shortly. You can see that the snapshot addresses various ways that Cisco Hyperflex has had a positive impact on interviewed organizations' IT and business operations along with a quote from one customer that we interviewed that looks at the impact of Hyperflex on it in terms of both cost and performance. At a high level, these findings in this snapshot show that this sample of Cisco customers is achieving strong value with Hyperflex, reflected in a 452% average five-year return on investment, while the Hyperflex platform allows them to run like workloads 
at half the cost in terms of IT infrastructure and IT staff time costs compared with their previous and or alternative environments. This means that, on average, these organizations are achieving sufficient value to ensure a break even on their investment in HyperFlex after an average of eight months. These financial benefits that IDC has quantified are based in large part on how HyperFlex delivers a better overall user experience for interviewed organizations to both employees and customers, but without sacrificing in terms of cost or efficiency. Improved user experience is tied to better application performance and the ability of IT organizations to deliver new features and functionalities in a timely manner to meet user demand, which thereby empowers employees to deliver more value to their businesses. Several metrics on this snapshot highlight these benefits. Much improved agility with HyperFlex, for example, is reflected in these organizations needing an average of 93% less time to deploy new servers. And improved performance and operational risk are reflected in average reductions in impactful unplanned downtime of 91%. Overall, you can see that, on average, we found that users of applications running on HyperFlex have gained just under 8% in higher gross productivity on average. We'll see and discuss additional information about these results in just a few minutes. Again, this snapshot is a separate deliverable associated with this study. And if you'd be interested in obtaining a copy of it, please let us or the Cisco team know. So I will now go through a number of slides that provide more details about those results that you saw on the snapshot that I just showed you. This ID study, IDC study includes a return on investment analysis, which means that what we've done is we've quantified the benefits that this group of Cisco customers is achieving by running applications on HyperFlex. This slide presents the total quantification of this value that we've done for purposes of this study, shown on an annual basis per 100 users of applications and workloads that are running on HyperFlex. And by users, in this case, we mean internal employees at these organizations. IDC quantifies value in four areas, typically, when we do these business value studies. And we've done that here for this study as well. The first category that you can see in dark blue is what we call business productivity benefits. This is the quantification of higher user productivity and revenue related to enhanced performance of business applications earlier access to new features and functionality, and the ability for interviewed organizations to deliver a consistent user experience across their central and branch offices. This means that their employees work more effectively, which increases their productivity levels and their ability to deliver value to their businesses. While these benefits also help several interviewed organizations realize higher, excuse me, higher revenue, which is included in this number. The second category is has to do with risk mitigation. And you can see this in the lighter blue, blue column. This is the value interviewed organizations achieve by reducing the frequency of impactful outages affecting workloads running on their Cisco HyperFlex platforms, which for these organizations translates to higher employee productivity and less business risk associated with potential losses or other issues stemming from outages. The third category, shown in green, is IT staff productivity benefits. This category of value is the quantification of interviewed organizations' ability to, ability to manage and support their HyperFlex environments more efficiently than their legacy platforms, thus freeing up time for these teams responsible for these activities. It also includes value that development team, teams gain from having a more agile IT infrastructure that allows them to be more responsive to business demand and ultimately more productive. And the final category that you see is IT infrastructure cost reductions, shown in purple. And cost is one of the major reasons that these organizations chose HyperFlex, that it is a, it is a cost effective IT platform, both compared to their legacy environments, which has enabled cost savings, both in terms of hardware and operational costs, as well as in many cases compared with taking a different approach for the workloads they're running on Cisco HyperFlex. And if you add these categories together, you can see what we came to in terms of the average annual benefits per 100 users for these organizations, which came to just under $59,000 per year over five years. The next slide looks at one of the most important areas of benefits 
this group of Cisco customers is achieving with Hyperflex, which is much improved IT agility. Their development and business activities increasingly depend on being able to match IT resources, including compute, storage, and networking capacity to business demand. With their legacy IT environments, they sometimes struggle to do this, needing to go through procurement processes and organizational silos to provide needed capacity. However, by leveraging a more streamlined, automated, and software-driven platform with Hyperflex, they've moved largely beyond these limitations and can now deploy new capacity both much faster and with much less staff time required. This slide demonstrates both the significance of this benefit for interviewed organizations, reductions in time of more than 80%, both for server, for deploying both server and storage resources on average, as well as the consistency of these benefits across interviewed organizations. You can see that all organizations we interviewed have at least halved the time required to deploy new server resources and are delivering storage resources in 45 to 99% less time with Hyperflex. Interviewed Cisco customers provided any number of examples of these types of agility benefits. You can see a quote on this slide from a customer that's gone from needing days in total to add vir virtual compute capacity to easily doing it within the same day with Hyperflex. Meanwhile, the actual staff time to re required to execute the deployment of a new VM for this organization has fallen to what it put in the seconds. One area this agility is especially important for is in terms of application development activities especially the ability to spin up environments for testing and to provide resources to deploy new applications and releases. One organization talked about this impact, explaining the capacity limitations associated with its previous IT infrastructure environment had actually caused it to stop deploying new applications on occasion before it moved to Hyperflex, whereas it can now service all requests and applications that come in from its business. The next slide, takes another step and looks at the impact of Hyperflex in terms of these organizations' business operations. Beyond the agility that we just talked about that helps IT organizations match user demand for applications and features, interviewed Cisco customers also described achieving much higher system and application performance with Hyperflex. This improved performance directly impacts how their employees work. They have robust access to the applications and features they need to do their jobs in a timely manner the benefit from strong and consistent performance of applications rather than dealing with latency and bottlenecks. We mentioned digital transformation earlier, and this is really the essence of having a digital enterprise, being able to move around data and use it to the advantage of businesses, which Hyperflex is helping these organizations achieve on a consistent basis across their often distributed operations. This results in two types of value that we've quantified related to the organization's use of Hyperflex. First, as you can see, higher user productivity, which is an operational efficiency for interviewed organizations. In other words, by having timely and robust access to high-performing applications and business services, employees across these organizations can work more effectively, thereby delivering more value to their organizations. They can focus on their jobs in a seamless manner. You can see the significance of this benefit in the table on this slide. Thousands of users, on application, of applications running on Hyperflex are more productive and thereby more valuable to their organizations. Higher productivity can be somewhat challenging to pin down, but it is real. For example, one interviewed organization discussed the impact of improved performance and faster delivery of new features to its VDI users on its Hyperflex platform. It noted that it can de deploy new apps and make changes to its VDI environment in much less time with Hyperflex which saves VDI users anywhere between 10 and 60 minutes of productive time per day, a substantial operational efficiency for this organization, given that it relies on VDI to maximize its employees' productivity levels. Second, as you can see, having a higher performing and more scalable IT foundation with Hyperflex helps these organizations achieve better business results. They deliver higher performing services and extend their IT operations to meet demand as it arises with greater ease thereby reducing the friction that IT places on their businesses. You can see a clear-cut example of this at work on this slide. This organization is running a point-of-sale transaction system on Hyperflex and can actually handle more transactions because of improved performance, which results pretty directly in higher sales. It makes sense that if its customers try to complete a purchase and cannot because of performance limitations, then some portion of them will leave and not return. 
Another organization described how Hyperflex has opened up new possibilities related to the use of data through improved performance, noting that it now has the performance levels required to process data in a way that creates more usable metrics for its business intelligence team, which in turn enables them to leverage data and find new ways to potentially make business gains and increase their organization's revenue. We've touched already on the benefit for these organizations of having a more reliable and robust infrastructure foundation with Hyperflex. You saw earlier some of the applications and workloads that they're running on their Hyperflex, Hyperflex platforms, many of which are quite important to business operations. With Hyperflex, these Cisco customers have reduced both the frequency of impactful plant outages as well as the time it takes them to resolve outages. You can see that they've gone from roughly one outage per month on average to an outage per year, which is a significant improvement. The quote on the slide goes to one way that Hyperflex has helped one of these organizations reduce risk related to these types of outages through redundancy. There's value associated with reducing unplanned outages for these organizations from both an actual cost of operations perspective in terms of reducing the cost of lost employee productivity and from a risk perspective because these organizations have confidence in the ability of their IT foundations to deliver high quality and uninterrupted access to business and applications and services to their employees and customers. Overall, as you can see on this slide, the sample of Cisco customers reported bringing down the impact of unplanned downtime by over 90% on average, going from around three hours of lost productive time per year per user to somewhere around 20 minutes. As we talked about earlier, both generally and also specific to Hyperflex, a fundamental advantage is having integrated software that supports workloads across hyper-converged environments, as well as the ability to better take advantage of automation, which reduces the number of manual tasks. This leads to more efficient IT operations, including for IT infrastructure teams. And this is also the case for Cisco Hyperflex customers. You can see on this slide that they reported needing 71% less staff time to manage the infrastructure they need for running the workloads on their Hyperflex platforms. Well, having a more robust infrastructure platform with Hyperflex that is less susceptible to performance problems also means that help desk teams at these organizations are called upon less often. You can see 56% less time spent on help desk activities related to workloads on these organizations' Hyperflex environments. For study participants, these efficiencies are typically important not only if, because they represent an efficiency that can help them compete more effectively and cost efficiently, but because they free up valuable staff time to take on other initiatives and activities that are important to the business. You can see one example here on the quote on this slide. This is an organization that's been able to transfer staff time freed up through efficiencies with Hyperflex from day-to-day -day IT activities to supporting business operations, in this case, managing its fleet and doing that better. This next slide takes an overall view for these organizations of the cost of running applications on their Hyperflex environments. That's this off against their previous or alternative environments that they considered. With Hyperflex, these organizations are able to deliver IT infrastructure in a more cost-effective way. They can take advantage of increased agility and performance to avoid the need to over-provision on hardware, operate leaner IT platforms, and expand as needed to match actual business needs. This not only helps them reduce lower, excuse me, reduce ongoing costs, but it also helps them right-size capital investments and reduces the likelihood that they'll pay for and deploy unneeded capacity. Interviewed organizations set off the cost of building and running Hyperflex against other approaches. One organization explained that it had migrated from a three-tier infrastructure approach that required, was requiring a refresh and determined that moving to Hyperflex cost about 50% less than it would have needed to spend to refresh that environment. For it, Hyperflex has provided an infrastructure that better fits its actual need, thereby allowing it to be more cost-effective. Meanwhile, several interviewed organizations compared Hyperflex against other options, including Public Cloud, that concluded that Hyperflex offered them the most cost-effective solution given the workloads they were targeting and their use requirements. For example, you can see this slide includes a quote from an organization that evaluated public cloud, public cloud alternatives 
but concluded that Hyperflex would cost significantly less for it to buy and operate given the workloads that it wanted to run in its Hyperflex environment. This next slide presents IDC's return on investment analysis for the study. You can see the results are presented on both a per organization and per 100 user basis. As mentioned earlier, this is per 100 internal users of applications and workloads run on these organizations' Hyperflex platforms. These results speak to the strong value that these organizations are achieving with Hyperflex, with IDC calculating the total average benefits as being worth around five and a half times the total discounted investment over five years, which is, re which is reflected in the 452% return on investment. Just a couple of notes about methodology. The investment costs that we quantified are holistic, so they represent the cost of Cisco Hyperflex hardware and also other costs associated with the deployment and use of Hyperflex, including staff time required to deploy and extend these environments, as well as any third-party costs related to deployment or optimization. You can see also on the slide that IDC uses a 12% discount rate assumption. This is IDC's standard assumption for business value studies and reflects allowance for the missed opportunity cost of potentially investing in another solution for these organizations. It also accounts for the assumed time value of money. Finally, the last slide that I'll show takes a look at where, where does this leave us? And I wanna end by summarizing our business value findings. In other words, what are the key takeaways based on what we heard from the Cisco customers that we interviewed about the most significant areas of impact for them of running applications on the Hyperflex platform. First, Hyperflex has had a real impact on how these organizations deliver business applications to their users and support their customers. Improved performance and scalability pave the way for users to maximize the value of business applications as they do their day-to-day -day work, while they can also better address business opportunities as they arise in a timely and robust manner, which can lead to additional revenue, as several organizations alluded to during their interviews. Second, improved performance is also reflected in reduced risk and operational interruptions from user business impacting outages related to workloads running on Hyperflex. This means that users lose less productive time when they cannot access applications key to how they work, and businesses face less risk from outages and data unavailability. Third, the teams responsible for deploying, managing, and supporting infrastructure and applications can work more effectively and efficiently. They take advantage with Hyperflex of software-driven processes and automation and having a more consolidated platform. This means that they can not only handle growing workloads, but devote time to other activities, including innovation and more project-driven work. And finally, the staff efficiencies combined with cost efficiencies related to buying and running hardware mean that Hyperflex can run equivalent workloads for these customers at a significantly lower cost you saw the 50% average for interviewed organizations just a couple of slides ago. This can not only help them reduce friction associated with business expansion, but it can also help them be more competitive. So with that, I wanna thank you very much for your time today. Um, and I am going to now turn this back over to Rob. Yeah, yeah, no, no, thank you, Matthew. I, I'm not gonna let you go just yet. So uh, one, I encourage if anybody does have any questions that we've not seen already, of course, please send those in. Uh, this is a chance to uh, to ask questions. And we got a little bit of time here. Um, but it, so first of all, thank you, Matthew, very much. And, um, uh, and anybody that wants to see that report, if you didn't notice in the, in the chat, it should be showing up in your interface here, but I'll call it out because verbally it's not too hard, but there's a short link you can use uh, if you want to write this down. If you don't have it, cs.co slash hyperflex tco, cs.co forward slash hyperflex tco, and you can get that report um, that Matthew authored here, uh, which goes into uh, a bit more detail uh, on some of the the stuff that was highlighted here as well. But Matthew, what I was curious about is um, just a very general question, and if this isn't something that you would normally reflect on, you feel free to say if you're not familiar with it. But I'm just kind of curious in terms of the market for hyperconvergence, not Cisco necessarily specifically, but um, how have you seen this transition from something people were kind of flirting with to something that they're saying, okay, this has a valuable place in my business and is helping me solve more, and, and not to the specific customers you're speaking to, because obviously they've made those decisions, but is it growing, basically? Is this, is this something everybody should be taking a much more serious look at? Um, 
So, so the way I'll, I think, I think that's a really good question, Rob. Um, I, my specific focus is um, on speaking with end user organizations. So I'll okay. speak from that perspective. Um, we okay. here at IDC do have a market um, analyst expert, also Eric Shepard, who was a co-author of this study. Um, and he can probably speak, you, you know, in more detail to broader trends. But I think what, I, what I've seen in the research that we've done, you know, on hyperconverge, both for um, hyperflex and otherwise, otherwise, is a deepening and an extension in terms of the workloads um, that organizations are running on hyperconverged. Mm -hmm. um, in this study, you know, we, I discussed and I mentioned some really key applications to what they're doing to fundamental, um, you know, business critical applications um, for their business operations. And mentioned the point of sale, um, point of sale activities for one of the organizations, and that's that's something we've seen. So you know, extension of hyperconverged, um, you know, moving from more initial efforts, um, which is helped and supported by that ability to um, start maybe a little bit smaller and then extend with ease. That's something mm. that we talked about. Yeah, good point. So, yep. yeah, I, I do think it's something that we've seen, um, you know, in the last several, especially in the last several years as we've as we've been looking at this. Okay. No, I appreciate that. And I appreciate your, your time to uh, to join us and kind of walk us through this today. And, uh, Kale, I was just going to ask you uh, kind of a similar question, but obviously within Cisco we've seen uh, Hyperflex not only grow from a customer perspective but grow from a technology maturation, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, perspective um, as we've continued to just – double down on the simplicity and the ability to use things in more location because we're doing this, it feels like at Cisco, we're doing this combination of we're creating technology to help simplify a lot of things that that, uh, that people want help with simplifying when it comes to how we're handling our data. But at the same time, the market is also changing where the data center is officially located, you know, and now we're, you know, I heard you, I think in your opening, you even mentioned core data center as a differentiation, uh, unless I'm reading too much into it, is just saying, hey, you know, the data center is, is not always that big, foreboding, um, tornado-proof building, you know, in, in some... Um, in some far off place, uh, it's it's really in a lot of different places because we need the data closer to us. Is that um, uh, you know are we leading that or are we responding to it or somewhere in between perhaps? You know I think that's I think that's somewhere in between. Um, and so I'll comment real quick, you know, on the on the maturation, if you will, of the uh, of the product. But uh, you know when we got into the hyperconverged market, uh, it was still it was still fairly early, you know, we weren't the first one in there, but what we really wanted to do was build off of, you know, that concept that had been established and, and build a better mousetrap for it and really mm -hmm. simplify uh, a solution that's easier to deploy, is going to provide uh, better performance to applications to enable more applications, like Matt was saying, to to run on a hyperconverged platform to really simplify operations across the board. When you look at the environment now, it is, it's really dynamic, it's really changing, that the data center isn't the only place where data, you know, lives at this point. Uh, you know, the edge is a really growing uh, area for oh, yeah. a lot of our customers right now. Um, you know, most uh, analyst firms are predicting within the next couple of years, like half of all data is going to be generated at the edge. And so looking at the changing landscape, yeah, we have uh, added additional features uh, into Hyperflex to to enable those more specialized areas, especially when you look at something like Edge, where you know, yeah, the simplicity of HCI is great when you have it in a central location, <laughs> but what happens when you have to deploy it in hundreds or thousands of locations globally? You know, there yeah. needs to be additional features that are built into that that will enable that platform to scale like that. So. You know, that's something that we worked on. We just launched uh, Hyperflex 4.0 uh, at the beginning of the year, which uh, which did include enhancements to Edge to to really start, you know, getting into that market more and really be a, a leader in that space. Uh, we're also enabling more workloads uh, on Hyperconverged with, uh, you know, accelerated platforms like our all-in BME uh, nodes as well that are you know now on sale it was you know part of the most recent release as well so you know it's it's application acceleration in the core maximizing the density in the core data center um, and then being able to seamlessly expand your operations to the edge 
um, with a common platform. Yeah, and I encourage everybody. Obviously, you know, each of these workshops ties back to usually something that we've covered on TechWise TV, and so I'll just go ahead and throw that um, uh, cross sell into here. Is you guys should check out. And you can go to TechWiseTV.com. In the last Hyperflex episode we did, and actually all still worth going back and just seeing because there's been a lot of consistency with regards to how the underlying foundation that we started off on in terms of a, a, a structured uh, file system. Um, you know, and taking the time, not worrying about being first to market, but being more about being first to market was something that really represented the spirit of what we're trying to achieve or the market really wants out of hyperconvergence. And then now what we're seeing is we're seeing the performance and the flexibility without losing the simplicity continue to exhibit itself. And and you guys went in two different directions. I noticed in the last show we did where we were talking about Hyperflex 4.0 and some of kind of the key stuff. And we're leaving, we'll leave the technology to that show. But in general, if you guys are curious about it, I encourage you to go back and watch two things, one of which is the fact that um, uh, the team, the technology teams working on this here within Cisco have enabled – uh, a whole new way of doing things at a much smaller level. So when you go into those edge locations, you don't you have even less hardware uh, to do to keep databases in sync because you're still concerned about high availability. You're still concerned about performance, but you know uh, the the location may not justify uh, multiple servers and multiple uh, things to have to manage and worry about. And then speaking of management on the other side, is that obviously you don't have the resources to physically uh, deploy, manage, reach out and touch and do things on, on a scale when things are not going to be all located in the same building. And so the uh, the, the incorporation of Intersight, which, um, which has just been phenomenal for um, – a free way for anybody that's using, you know, Hyperflex already or UCS even. This is a uh, Intersight uh, has just emerged as a really nice uh, cloud-based way to be able to stay in touch with your infrastructure and simplify a lot of things that um, that just aren't going to be possible, especially when you're dealing with this increase in edge deployments. But um, so anyway, that stuff's all covered in the show. I uh, want to thank Matthew. Appreciate you coming on and, and joining us and walking us through uh, your research. I'm hoping we get to do some more stuff with you guys as we all continue to move forward. Uh, and then Kale, always enjoy working with you and your team, uh, fellow Texan. Um, so special place in my heart for you right there, even if you get to live in the town I'd prefer to be in down in Austin. But um, either way, guys, always fun to work with you. And uh, to our audience, thank you so much for joining us. Again, I want to remind you, as you click out, you will get a survey request and more than likely a pop-up if you click on there saying that they're warning you're leaving. Everything's fine. Don't worry about that pop-up. We're still in control. We're just trying to make sure you're well-informed. Uh, but make sure you inform us. Let us know how we did, what you'd like to see different, and uh, give us a few notes on that survey. We certainly appreciate it. Um, but this has been a TechWise TV workshop. My name is Rob Boyd. We thank you so much. We'll see you again on the next one. Take care.